Hey guys, Legion here and welcome back to the finale, the last episode of Unity Park. So in this video I will have a huge task and that is to finish the entirety of this whole park and all of the areas that aren't filled out yet. Like for example the area in between my Uteranus habitat and Caesar's Iguanodon habitat. Then also the area uh, behind my habitat and then sort of in between my habitat and Python's uh, construction site. And then the area behind um, Python's construction site habitat and also sort of connecting you know, between his... Um, sort of facility build and then also Tommy's build in the back. And finishing this park really was a ton, a ton of work so it would be really nice of you guys if you were to actually watch this video to the end and leave it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new of course because that would really help me out and sort of uh, repay the all of the effort and all of the time I put into this park. But the reason that this wasn't just an easy park build to complete and have a lot of fun with is because at this point of the park build, the save file was already insanely laggy and also there were a ton of crashes. Basically anything you would normally do when uh, building a park uh, could cause this game to crash, like placing water, placing foliage, placing fences, uh, placing path, placing tour tracks or buildings. Almost anything of those could crash the game and crashed it multiple times. So for that reason, uh, the whole recording is a little bit all over the place and I'm just jumping in between sections. But yeah, I hope you guys are gonna stick with it anyways. And yeah, I hope you guys are gonna stick with me to find out how I finished off this huge project and this insane park build. So to finish off this park, I built about four habitats, you would say, and one of them is a Utah Raptor habitat, which is next to my Utah habitat that I built in my second episode of this park. And in the plaza in the back with sort of those organic shaped cutouts, there's one viewing area. And from there you can see into the Utah Raptor habitat. And then the tour from the Utah habitat also goes outside of the Utah habitat and then into a Dreadnoughtus and Pentaceratops habitat. And then in between my build and Caesar's build, there's a little bit of a plaza and then there's, auto, um, there's as well a habitat for the Spinosaurus because I thought that we could use another large carnivore, large piscivore in that case, in this build. And then also uh, when you continue Caesar's path uh, that views sort of into his Iguanodon habitat, which I have to say I really love. And yeah, there, next to there I placed an aviary for the new Thanatos Dracon. So I actually managed to uh, do a build for the Thanatos Dracon as well now on my channel. So I have all of the DLC creatures complete. And also we only had one aviary um, up, on the, up until this point in this park and it was a single dome. And yeah, I heard someone, like I think it was Miri maybe said that we could maybe use another aviary or someone else. So for that reason, I thought it would be good to integrate another aviary. But let's get back to actually talk about the build I'm doing right now here. So uh, currently I'm building a plaza in front of like a little uh, path plaza area in front of the Thanatos Dracon aviary. So that from Caesar's path um, in front of the Iguanodon habitat, uh, you go off into this little plaza, then you uh, can access multiple viewing galleries for that aviary. So I sort of built a little niche into the aviary with like, you know, um, where you then have the area uh, for all of the viewing galleries, which I think is always a nice trick, so you sort of get this uh, nice uh, cut off plaza from the path and you don't just go from the path directly into the viewing galleries really. But then another uh, way that this area is connected, uh, like the main uh, way that this area is connected to the rest of the park is that, um, you know, sort of Caesar has built like these little cutouts, these little um, areas that go off of the main path and from those uh, those semicircles you can look into the habitat and then on one, on one of them I basically um, completed the circle and then on the other side, you know, on the one side it's the viewing area and on the other side from there you can get into the rest of the park and then it sort of has a um, another semicircle around it and then you have a straight path going straight into the next plaza. Then on the left there's like this gonna be this viewing area for the Spinosaurus habitat which I'm gonna build uh, pretty much at the end of the speed build and then you're gonna get as uh, well as I said into another plaza. And then from that plaza, uh, after the Spinosaurus habitat, you get into the plaza of the Uteranus habitat. And then there behind that, I built two more habitats to sort of complete the whole tour that I started in the Uteranus habitat, going over the bridge, word, which I created using the one and only Monroe glitch, of course. Also, there was still uh, pretty much just empty path uh, in between the section that uh, Python built and also Tommy's uh, section that he built and I decided to leave most of that path uh, just blank and sort of put some flags in front of it to um, sort of 
just uh, mark it as like a area for uh, the park workers to go so it's a restricted supposed to be like a restricted area where um, you know the guests are not supposed to go that's why I didn't decorate anything there and build any plazas there and then also the construction site habitat that Python built in his previous episode I also uh, sort of integrated that and uh, had the tour go by it so in the future uh, when that habitat would be finished of course the tour would also uh, have a way to look into that habitat. Also when it comes to the Utah Raptor habitat in this um, build, in this episode, I didn't really record most of the building uh, that I did inside of there because I first had to do pretty much what I uh, always do with habitats uh, nowadays, which is that on the back walls I use the concrete barrier, then I line that with the fluffy bush, and then I line the fluffy bush with uh, rocks, which I always just love the look of that, and I think it looks just so natural and I can't really go through this, I, I couldn't really just do this build without doing that, it would have just looked uh, incomplete and also uh, it wouldn't have looked as tied together with the other habitats I've already done here in this park. So I decided to just do it uh, even with the lag, so I placed most of the rocks that I had to sort of spam uh, outside of the fluffy bush, uh, surround the fluffy bushes. Uh, off screen so I also got then I got a little bit carried away and started decorating the Utah Raptor habitat but I just did the same thing that I'm also gonna do in the Dreadnoughtus habitat which you're gonna see pretty much uh, all of the decorating of and that is um, the really similar to what I did in the first episode as well with those habitats right there sort of just uh, creating a tied together look and a similar biome uh, so what I did was that I always had like sort of rock clusters with uh, rocks you know, next to each other then I placed some uh, trees in there and then I surrounded that with the foliage uh, brush on this map which I really love which is the fern brush. Uh, that brush just looks really great so I used that combination and then where the dinosaurs would be walking most of the time I made some I think it's called pacing trails sort of uh, created that using the sand brush from this map. Also when it comes to the Utah Raptor habitat in this um, build, in this episode, I didn't really record most of the building uh, that I did inside of there because I first had to do pretty much what I uh, always do with habitats uh, nowadays, which is that on the back walls I use the concrete barrier, then I line that with the fluffy bush, and then I line the fluffy bush with uh, rocks, which I always just love the look of that, and I think it looks just so natural. and. I can't really go through this, I, I couldn't really just do this build without doing that, it would have just looked uh, incomplete and also uh, it wouldn't have looked as tied together with the other habitats I've already done here in this park. So I decided to just do it uh, even with the lag, so I placed most of the rocks that I had to sort of spam uh, outside of the fluffy bush, uh, surround the fluffy bushes. Uh, off screen so I also got and then I got a little bit carried away and started decorating the Utah Raptor habitat but I just did the same thing that I'm also gonna do in the Dreadnoughtus habitat which you're gonna see pretty much uh, all of the decorating of and that is um, the really similar to what I did in the first episode as well with those habitats right there sort of just uh, creating a tied together look and a similar biome uh, so what I did was that I always had like sort of rock clusters with uh, rocks you know, next to each other then I placed uh, some uh, trees in there and then I surrounded that with the foliage uh, brush on this map which I really love which is the fern brush. Uh, that brush just looks really great so I used that combination and then where the dinosaurs would be walking most of the time I made some I think it's called pacing trails sort of uh, created that using the sand brush from this map. And as I've already said, uh, this build in general was a really big struggle to actually complete uh, because of all of the lag and of the performance issues, which are actually mostly uh, attributed to not just all of the crazy building and all of the huge amount of decorations we did right here, but uh, it's mainly uh, because of the actual map that we use. And that is because um, what we all know now is that the Biosyn map actually is really poorly optimized and just coded in a weird way, which makes it more laggy, which is probably also because of the mist that is on the map uh, when you know being created from all of the trees and just something and it's just something about this map that just makes it more laggy so a little warning if you want to build a big detailed park don't use this map um, in general I like this map uh, honestly I liked building with it in unity right here also as you saw I really like using this fern brush which I, is one of my favorite like foliage brushes in the game like uh, one of the just decorative uh, foliage brushes that's like not the trees and I really like using that to sort of create this look for the habitats that you already saw me do in the Utah Raptor habitat and that I just talked about that I started using in the first episode already. And uh, yeah, I like this web in general, I haven't built on it much, but I don't think I'm gonna be building it on it um, ever again because of the performance, especially 
and because now I've spent a lot uh, of time on this map and it has it was a quite frustrating time I have to say with all of the crashes and sadly um, because first of all there were already so many decorations also and um, the building took so long and I didn't really have that much time to finish a really big area of this park the whole park um, like the whole area at the end isn't really that detailed as detailed as I would normally do it I normally I would have placed like more benches I would have uh, filled like um, for example the circular plaza uh, at the Spinosaurus habitat with sort of those two semicircle uh, areas where I sort of just put some foliage brushes in there I normally would have filled those out with the ferns in my evergreen park for example but I just couldn't do it here I didn't have the patience it would have lagged out the game even more and I also just didn't have the time but then also I uh, would have used more benches in the park, would have lined more uh, of the path with the concrete barriers. Instead I uh, opted for the, that one planter, like it's this one planter that is with like rocks and plants and it's a pretty long planter. And in back in the day, like I used to use that planter a lot more, but nowadays I just uh, gravitate more to like the concrete barrier for example, because, because I just think it looks nicer. But of course um, the more time efficient variation is that bigger uh, rock and plant planter but I'm also quite happy with this build that I in the end uh, also managed to introduce uh, the Thanatos Dracon to this build uh, because I heard uh, as I said that they are that we should probably have another aviary in this park so I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to build something for the Thanatos Dracon on this channel and it's just because I really love the Thanatos Dracon uh, as you saw in my video ranking all of the species from that DLC the Thanatos Dracon is my favorite because it's just such a perfect and stark it and I love the skins for it especially like the one where um, you make a, a black base skin and then you use like this pattern where it has blue uh, on its beak and also on the wings and it, it just looks awesome that skin and in general I love the Thanatos Dracon and it definitely sort of replaces the Quetzalcoatlus for me in this game sadly but also you know the Thanatos Dracon is just a lot better so I'm glad that we got a better version of the Quetz in that way and yeah I'm happy that I managed to build for it uh, finally with this episode and this build for Unity Park. But now since this isn't just any uh, end to a park build, this is of course the end of Unity Park. I have to, you know, say something about the entire project and how that was uh, sort of for me and also the other participants. And I personally had quite a lot of fun with this, especially with my Uteranus build. Like that was one of my favorite builds I've ever done and also had a lot of fun building that because I basically, basically could just take uh, all uh, ideas that I had into one build instead of like spreading them out over multiple builds like having one build with uh, a tour track like that having like one um, build with like that arena having like one build with uh, the nighttime enclosure and instead I just tossed all of them into one habitat because of course it was um, one of the few habitats I was able to build here of course then uh, it came uh, to be now that I actually had to build four more habitats right here and finish off the entire park but that also was uh, fun in a way uh, even though it was quite frustrating I had a lot of fun uh, in some areas um, and like I said also I had a lot of fun building the entrance and I think it's just great what the others were able to contribute to this park and of course um, that is exactly what this park was made for because everybody just has uh, their own unique and different building style like you have Caesar with his like zoo like builds you have Miri with her like crazy mountain for example that she then finished off with those with that awesome glowing uh, valley you had Tommy's awesome uh, glowing valley as well which also inspired Miri then later to build another glowing valley and um, then also his megalodon build his lagoon build uh, with like all of the different uh, glowing sections again you had like a coral reef uh, on land basically then you had like this volcanic area and just looked so awesome and themed and it made so much sense and python with this like awesome plaza designs and just pathing and uh, all of the awesome detail and the facility area i especially love his builds and i also especially love caesar's um build for the iguanodon that habitat i don't know what it is i just love the way that habitat turned out and then also Mon monty's area looks great uh, the diorama he built is really really fun i love how he used the elevation from uh, python's build as a backdrop for his uh, stegosaurus habitat and all of these great builds just come together to make a super unique park maybe it's not like the best park ever built for example um, with like the last areas i made right here not being like super detailed and super special but i think that this is just a super unique park build and 
yeah, that's why this project is just awesome and I'm happy that I was able to work with all of these great people. So yeah, this project is truly something unique, something the community has never seen before and now it has finally, or finally or sadly, gladly, whatever you think, it has now come to an end and I'm happy the way it turned out. And again, thanks so much to all of the other creators and builders for working with me on this and just contributing uh, awesome ideas and awesome builds to this park. But yeah, with all of that said, Unity Park is finally finished in this last episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the speed build, I hope you guys uh, love the build and yeah, see you guys in the tour at some point. Um, and yeah, enjoy the cinematics of this build. See you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Oh, you